Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight, back here with Kill Count with a brand new one. Today, we got Critters 4 from 1992. Yep, the one that was made back to back with Critters 3. And tonight, well, going out of space, and luckily for us, the last one we got to deal with for a while. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to come back to this, but, well, you know. Anywho, how about you hop in and enjoy the show? Be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's check it out. Previously on the Critters Kill Counts. <laughs> Howdy, James. Affirmative. I needed to show up to make sure that people keep watching these Critters Kill Counts. Yeah, but what are you going to do Arsh? to keep the views up? Give the people what they want, which is what? why I've sent another host to take over for the next Kill Count. Whoa, what? what? Who? Hey, you can't do that. Inside this pod. What pod? What? Oh, Ow. I can't believe we got a new host. Are you kidding me? Come on, I'm this channel's fun uncle. It lets them drink beer. <laughs> All right, let's see who's in here. Puppy? Oh, hi, Molly. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Replaced by the dog. <laughs> Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in Poor all Zorin. our favorite horror movies. I'm Molly A. Dog, and today we're talking- Sorry, this is just yeah, stop, too stop. silly, even for a Zorin Kill Count. All right, go on. Yep, bye, Molly. Yeah, go on and get. <laughs> all right, newest editor, Sarah. Roll that intro again. You got it. There we go. <laughs> Redo! Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims Hello. in all our favorite horror movies. I'm Zoran, Zoran. Spaces after a sentence of voyage, Sports. and today we continue Raphael's least favorite franchise with Critters 4, Critters 4. released direct to video in 1992. Where did they come up with this stuff? As we all know, a good horror franchise eventually winds up in space. But actually, this one well, aside from started Jason, in so. space, so it makes more sense. Critters 4 picks it up where the last one left around. off, with Charlie told by Ugg to preserve the last Krite eggs in the universe. Unfortunately, the poor guy gets sent into space with them, frozen Oops. and flung into the future like Whee! Cartman waiting for a Nintendo Wii. He teams up with a crew <laughs> of space salvagers to endlessly wander the halls of a space station occasionally stumbling upon critters when the budget allows. Contrary to its name, Critters 4 barely has four critters in it. You know, I kind really? of call Critters 4 Critters Light. This was due to last minute <laughs> script changes after writer David J. Scow was brought in to fix the original script by Joseph Lyle. Well, we have what happened? this many dollars left in the screenplay fund. Can you oh. save Critters 4 for us? I said, this is what I offered to do originally. With the script changes, Whoops. it became impossible to afford more Krites. Had they told us, Ugh. we might have been able to accommodate it. We spent all the money to build the puppets on Critters 3. All the money was done and spent and things were built. Critters 4 was filmed back to back with Critters 3. So a lot of the same crew remained as they yeah. tore down Whoops. the apartment sets and built an entire spaceship inside the abandoned grocery store they had rented. And kudos <laughs> to production designer Philip Dean Foreman for making all of this with basically no money in a grocery yeah. store. Hey, Taking Leo. up directing duties was Rupert Harvey, who had co-produced the previous Leo, films know. alongside Barry Opper. Harvey's more British sensibilities nixed a lot of the lighthearted tone of the previous films. Oof. So sadly, there are no Critter parties. Critters 4 is much darker than any of the other three <laughs> movies. For that and many other reasons, Critters 4 is my least favorite of the original films. While it's not an insult to humanity like Critters A New Binge, it's just really boring. With most of the film being people clacking on keyboards and spouting generic sci-fi jargon. ID transmit incoming. I must go downstairs and make sure that the gravity panels still drag in a ton and a half, okay? I got the de-icer boots working, sir. Must be one of them subsection power lines shorting out in the condensation. Oh my god, there is so much of that. And worst of all, the critters You're spend the most of their this. time hiding in vents and behind off-screen POV shots. But thankfully, when they do show up, they still look great thanks to the Kyoto Brothers. Can the longest film in the franchise with the fewest critters actually increase our numbers? Not bloody likely. Well, let's yeah, make no sure kidding. and get to the kills. Yeah, something tells me this ain't gonna work well. I mean, seriously, they put all their money on you know, Critters 3, which, I mean, I get going back to back, but if you're gonna blow your money on 3 and yet realize, oh crap, we forgot about 4, yeah, don't do back to back if you plan ahead. You know? Also, why the change up? Weird. Just all I gotta say. <sighs> Poor Kyoto's. I mean, they're doing great, it's just. Too bad it's kind of tied to a bad film franchise. No? Anyway, let's just get this going. 
and get out of this world with Critters 4. Let's wrap it up. The movie begins right where the last one left off. Charlie's trying to destroy some critter eggs only for Daddy Ugg to nope. tell him, nope. To show how serious this is, Ugg sends a space capsule to destroy this building. Since these are the last remaining Krite eggs in the universe, Charlie has to put them in this pod that's conveniently designed for exactly two critter eggs. The pod then gives a 15 second warning to escape, which it promptly ignores and immediately locks Charlie in before knocking Wait. him out with a fog machine. The Tylenol pill of the pod is then rapidly released into space. Oh, space! Flies off into the horizon and directly into a title card. Title card. Oh man, that low budget explosion <laughs> really setting our expectations here. We flash forward Where's 53 one? years to the Saturn Quadrant, 53. where not Leonardo DiCaprio is juggling some planets. He then takes a moment to completely <laughs> contradict the year we just saw by showing this is 2342 20, instead what? of 2045. Oh, you know, just a minor difference of 300 years. That's older than America. This is Ethan, an engineer apprentice on the RSS Tesla. The rest of the crew includes lecherous captain Rick Buttram, the endlessly gum-chewing and confoundingly named engineer Al Albert Burt, the overly qualified Albert, pilot Albert Fran, Burt. and Rob Van Bland over here is cargo specialist Bernie. Ethan can't hey, wait to get home so he can see his dad again. The rest of the crew can't wait to get this movie started by taking Charlie's red pill of a ship with some literal shaky effects work. Mm. They pull the pot aboard and Ethan spots an old intergalactic council logo. Before they dissolve? Yeah, the old logo. So wait, did they huh. dissolve or just get a new logo? Eyes come uh, Dissolved or not, what the crew reports their findings to this very Wayland yutani like Terracor, <laughs> which just so happens to be run by UGG. Hey, UGG. Oh, Tetra. God damn it, movie, will you get your Save continuity, continuity. Right for like five seconds? Oh wait, Ugh. Tetra? Now that logo makes sense. Ugg, <laughs> or sorry, Tetra, is prepared to offer them three times the going rate for the pod if they can make it to his station three days away. Actually, shouldn't that be four times in four days? That's a true <laughs> Tetra. Nerd. <laughs> The crew Thank briefly you, argues about holding out for more money. And if I had a Nikola for every time they argued on the Tesla, I'd have one fake unit of currency. They agree yep. to Tetra's terms and conclude this Disney ride line video that really just makes me miss the alien encounter ride they had at Tomorrowland. <laughs> God, that was scary as hell. Much better than Stitch's crappy licking escape or whatever the hell that thing was. <laughs> Some decent spaceship model shots eventually take us to the Terracore base where we meet the <laughs> station's motherly AI. You may call me Angela. Ooh, that's Hello, a Angela. little awkward. We've already caught an Angela on board. Yeah, that's right. Angela Bassett. Committed, oh, Bassett. had an intensity, very present. <sighs> who she is today, man. Great actor. In fact, Ooh. let's take a moment to talk about the incredible cast who elevates this material much higher than it deserves. Okay. We, of course, have Academy Award nominee Angela Bassett, who was recently the epitome hey, of Wakanda Yas forever. Queen in Wakanda Forever. <laughs> the scummy captain is played by Danish actor Anders Hove, most famous oh. for the subspecies, oh, subspecies. films. Cool. And then there's this guy. Why Robert. does that look so familiar? Wait, Dominic? That's probably see? because he's Oscar nominee Brad Dorif. Previously seen Yo, in the kill count in the endlessly blocked Brad. Chucky recounts. And also several other films. And don't forget Bernie, Damn, he Brad, was the cool. drug dealer in Twin Peaks. Oh, and as for Ethan, uh, I don't know, he's just some guy. An extended <laughs> conversation with the ship's computer plays out Damn, like me Brad talking Dorf. to my Alexa. The computer's fucked up. I beg your pardon? It lets us know the Ooh, station harsh. is abandoned, so time for Bert to get busy with his magic fingers. Brad came up with that whole uh, bit <laughs> that he would do sitting in his station. He would rattle off a bunch of keys and finalize it by just going bat like that. He sees that most of the floors are shut down to conserve power, but on their level, they have executive suites and a pharmacy that piques Bernie's interest. Just show me where the pharmacy is. Feeling a little bit under the weather there, Bernie? No, he's just <laughs> finally trying to give us that Medicare for all plan his campaign promised. The computer's Good logic only. is about 50%, allowing for some nice okay. comedic mm -hmm. moments. Take me to the visiting ship dock. What? Ship's doctors will be found on deck four. Corridors 11. Canceled! Oh, it's so nice to finally see an AI that's as accurate as Siri. Sorry, I found two accurate dealerships near you. Would you like me to book a test no, drive? No, cancel. Fuck off! Wait, no. 
Book a maintenance appointment, I need one. They also learn the station's <laughs> nuclear core is at yellow alert, but that doesn't uh -oh. pose any immediate danger, so they don't have to worry about that till act three. Everyone splits <laughs> up to explore the station. Tell me which way to the wet showers. Oh, sorry, no wet showers in the future. We all just take dust baths like chinchillas. Oh, oh wait, never mind. There is <laughs> still mind. one working wet shower. And as Stella's got her boobs to the back of the camera, Captain Jack Pervo watches before joining her. Come in. Oh, God, really? She's gonna. Why are you? Oh, yes. Thank Bo you. Jack him in the face. Come, Damn, come I here. love you, Angela. Wow. Why, that's very kind. Not, Not you. you! The rest of the crew witnesses <laughs> the captain going down with her fist and makes jokes about him after he runs off. Asshole. Captain asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Our eye lines make no sense. The captain takes his anger out on the pod. The weapon sets Hi. off an alert and we learn the best way to deal with Angela's broken logic circuits is reverse psychology. Do not give me security clearance to all levels. You have security clearance in all levels. Ethan is sent down to investigate, but gets trapped in the elevator, which allows the captain to redo his thing, thus opening up the coffin pod. Yes, time for some critters. But Not actually yet. no. Nope. Instead, Hi. we get an extended scene of the captain giving Ethan life advice. You Why? Young. You figure you got lots of chances. There'll come a time when those chances run out. Uh, yes, well, uh, you are actually- Hi, Jeff Goldblum, have, uh, welcome back. ...in your, uh, uh, Critters movie here, uh, perhaps. The conversation goes south. Again, probably, I mean, we only have two, which... I'm still not too sure how many you get per egg. Three? So we get six? I don't know. I guess we'll know once the crites start catching. But still, we're gonna be here for a while. We haven't even released them, it was just like... Me, 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 me. Let's keep on. South when Ethan refuses to help the captain steal the pod. He's then subsequently knocked out oh. and strung up like a Hans Gruber henchman. A noise from the pod makes <laughs> the captain abandon his leather facey in playtime. And upon investigation, he finds Charlie, who thinks no time has passed at all. I almost got locked. Oh. In. I'm in space, aren't I? Honestly, I yep. love how disappointed he is to be in space again. I, um, <laughs> hate space. Also, Don Opper really does a great job making Charlie a likable fella. This fella, on the other hand, is a piece of shit. Mm, and this piece of shit's looking to eat something for breakfast. But turns out these eggs have already hatched. Or maybe Ooh. Charlie found that Playboy from part two. Oh, come on, man. Use a sock. That better the be the eggs. babies attack the captain, there. crunching on him and launching directly into his mouth. And everyone knows that a critter in your craw will make you scream like an elephant. <laughs> he rides around looking like Greta from Nightmare 5, Ooh. all while Charlie breaks oh, his are. personal pinto-powered pea shooter. Until finally Hi. the captain dies Hi, with Rick. an inanimate critter puppet shoved down his throat. Ooh. With his pinto popper kaput, Charlie grabs the captain's gun and gives one of the critter babies a haircut, hearkening <laughs> back oh, to his ancestor forward. from the hungry heifer. They leave their Did meal you? behind, and Charlie okay, frees Ethan two. to go wander the corridors with him. Charlie explains he's a bounty hunter looking to exterminate the critters, which he tries to describe to Ethan. You ever see a piranha? Oh yeah, I've seen the original, the AHA remake, and the uh, made-for-TV remake with Mila Kunis. Well, it won't look nothing like a piranha. Damn. Okay, why'd you bring it up then? Especially on that last one. Ethan mm. nabs a lab coat that has the right key to advance to the next level. And that level is this leftover specimen lab from Flight of the Navigator. They putz around mm. for a bit until Charlie finds a vent. And before you can say, come out to Hi. the coast, a disposal tube is activated, sending them from Die Hard ripoff to Star Wars ripoff. Whee! They land in the styrofoam Whoa. and chicken feather storage room, where Angela starts the jettison sequence to remove this mainstay from the franchise. Yeah, no, 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 no. But cancel, they're able cancel, cancel, to cancel, escape cancel. through more reverse psychology and another vent that leads them back to Bernie. Space, the final frontier for all horror franchises. Leprechaun, Pinhead, Jason, Turkey, even the fucking Amityville house for really? some reason. Amityville? So the question huh. is, who Who's is next? left? Hi, Jason. That's right, or bitches. Freddy. In space, no one can hear you dream. <laughs> the nightmare on planet Elm Street. One small step for man. One giant sleep for mankind. Oh, what a load of crap. You know, not every horror franchise needs to go to... Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding Why me! Chuck Rogers in the 24th and a half century! I didn't agree to this! Time to play hide the solar system.
The crew convenes in the AstroTurf <laughs> playroom <laughs> where Ethan lets Charlie know that his license is very expired. Charlie, this is like 53 years ago. Okay, so it is 2045? Dude, you gotta fix your calendar. Also, yeah, that license is the... so old, it somehow has lost the S on Grover's Bend. Okay, I'm sorry, who was the script supervisor on this? Diane H. Newman, oh come on, you worked on WandaVision and Friends. Actually, that finally explains why Ross misspelled Rachel's last name on the wedding invite. I, I, I watch a lot of Friends. <laughs> I don't. Sorry, I have to done. Ethan used- Yeah, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> just woken up, just realized, and the space again. God damn it. Jeez, this is so weird. Like, I have still no idea what's going on. Let's keep going. This is the Mondrian computer mm -hmm. to access some exposition from Dr. McCormick, the scientist McCormick? whose ID he found. She's played by Anne Ramsey right before landing her most notable role of Lisa you? Stemple on Mad About You. McCormick's oh. been researching alien creatures to use as weapons. Hmm. Seems familiar. And they've Aliens? had good luck with the unfortunately named Syphiloids, who could STD destroy an entire planet. But you know, they can easily be stopped by penicillin. So she's on the lookout for a new breed of creature that can self-replicate and is very aggressive. Yeah, I thought I'd do a fuck you will. Oh yeah, it's an cool. all-out gremlin critter fight! fight. <laughs> That's it? Really, you guys? <sighs> That's much lamer than I thought it would be. To save mm -hmm. money, the critters have been watching all of this from the vent. They then see Bernie made off with Sarah Logan's key, and he uses it to open the door to the pharmacy, revealing a Shangri-La mm -hmm. of pills, mm -hmm. all stored without any labels. He grabs them like a kid in an opioid store, but a bioscan reveals the critters are on, on their, their way. way. Mm -hmm. Seems for me. Yeah, oh, it bit me. Bert Stop tries it. to warn B Ernie like a stuttering gas station worker, but the ponytailed plunderer won't possibly be placated without his precious package of pick me up pills. Oh. Lip bite. Zorn, did you over alliterate, buddy? I'm good. The perp <laughs> prolonged pill pursuing. Oh. I'm okay. Gives the critters plenty of time to ambush him from outside and inside, inside? somehow. What? God, these things teleport faster than a Hayden Christensen movie to a Walmart bargain bin. Their attack causes more stumbling and flailing with stuffed animals. And Again, judging only from two. these behind the scenes photos, Hector Eric Dare was not a not fan happy. of filming this scene. The rest of the crew arrives too late to save Bernie and they find him dead on the floor. Man, <laughs> talk about a weak end to Bernie. The mm -hmm. critters use the kill count graphic as a distraction and plot a new course for Earth. You know, to get this franchise back on track. I got the chip, you get the kids. Unfortunately, the kids, the kids aren't all oh. right. After Regala rebels against this tribe of eggs, she smashes most of them before Bert busts out his Chucky L. I'm sorry, why would you stop her from, you, whatever, it doesn't matter. What are you they doing? make it back to the ship and prepare to launch while the Gemini killer upgrades Charlie's method of murder. Antique. Colt 45 used to be the most powerful handgun on earth. Hey, we got another gun nut named Bert. Charlie puts the gun to use when a critter pops out of this movie's favorite location, a vent. It runs around the cockpit while Charlie fires and misses. And he finally lands a shot that kills our first critter <laughs> an hour and eight minutes into this thing. Too bad Man, it's not two. the only thing that Charlie killed. Congratulations, Charlie. You have just murdered. The ship. But we don't count ships Oops. unless they're sentient. And this one ain't no Moya. With their only ship deactivated, the pissed off crew shames Charlie and sits back to- hey, you're the one that gave him the gun. Don't blame me. Ethan then steals Bert's gun to go take care of the last critter. Bert tries to stop him, but you know, Chucky's never been the best with kids. You're not my father! But if he was, Ooh. he'd accept you for who you are. No matter what! With his Thank serenity you, lost, the space cowboy searches the halls to this bizarre, almost tremors-like music that's been what? playing throughout the movie. Let's feel like Ethan's hunt tremors. for the Krites proves to be a very possible what? mission, as he uh -oh. finds more hatched eggs and a very gooey, hairless critter baby in an incubator. We couldn't ooze them up enough. And I remember <laughs> the Kyoto's, we were Yikes. having such fun. The critters use a metabolic accelerator to help this baby balloon past porcupine puberty and straight into critulthood. Ethan oh then boy. just kind of looks at this and then runs away. Hell, even the critter Cow. could give two shits at this point. Meanwhile, Terracor has arrived, borrowing some footage of the bounty hunter ship from the first two movies. A couple of Darth yes, Vader paintballers emerge alongside Ugg, or Tetra, Brother Dusk. Who is this guy again? He was my friend. He is. 
Actually, sure. he might be a Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor, since the only thing he wants right now is eggs. Tetra tries forcing Fran to tell him where they are with a game of slap shots. Whoa! Ooh, shots! Whoa. <laughs> if only. Yeah! Hell yeah! Woo! Best Woo! hurricane yeah. party ever! Yeah. Oh, look at me! Ooh. I don't like this party anymore. When Bert's <laughs> worm tongue insults this go-go 80s Reaganaut, he pulls out a gun and shoots Bert in the Ooh. Ade Due Dembele, turning him into a dead hero. An upset Ethan has an appropriate reaction to his father figure's death, while Charlie responds in a much more laid back way. What? I'm sorry, someone you know just died in front of you. That's not how you react. Zorn, my dearest friend, you said you wanted me in for a cameo? Why? No! <laughs> There's your reason. <laughs> That's like how that. you react to your friend just dying. <laughs> sorry. All right, bit's over, Michael. Mike? Mike? Ah, shit. Gonna get yeah, Rod and Roy. Rod Zord, Rod. tells the Masters of the Universe guards to search the station, while this movie searches for an explanation as to why Ugg is set to evil. I did not make Ugg evil. What the hell? Rupert and Barry made Ugg evil. I remember where the ideas came from, but I don't know that they were necessarily good ideas. We were looking did for- Did Ugg just take over the console Night Shyamalan, you are not. Nope. Honestly, he's not even- Not a twist. We get a boring game of hallway cat and mouse as Ethan shows Angela who's the boss. Using more reverse psychology, he gets her to funnel the foreign market stormtroopers into the lab. Once they're trapped inside, a whole lot of whip pans hide the low number of puppets they had on hand. <laughs> on hand, you get it? Nope. Mm -hmm. What do you know? Shut up, you. Also, what is this number measuring? Is it, it meters? Because they're not that minutes? far. I don't know. Maybe it's just minutes till we can finally end this movie. Anyway, their aim is somehow worse than actual stormtroopers, which leads to some off-screen screams signifying these were the deaths we were looking for. Ethan Probably. grabs some eggs that they really should have let Fran smash earlier. But yep. if they yeah, did I that, would. what would he be able to juggle now in order to distract Ugg I am? Please don't smash my green eggs on the door. Oops. And do not smash them on the floor. Too late. He positions himself so Fran can grab the gun tucked in his non-bounty hunter leads. Then he tosses the last egg in the air. And when Ugg goes for it, Fran uses the gun to punch what? him. Ah, whatever. I guess she only likes gunpowder in her milkshakes. Fran's been waiting to exit. And with Ugtra knocked out, she finally heads to the ship with Charlie. But Ethan stays back to make sure that Charles Lee laying there doesn't pass his soul into any dolls. And that's when a very alive critter pops out of, oh God, there another is. vent. This bald critter charges him because I guess they never went to Quill Shooting Academy in this movie. Mm. But hey, we do get a cool rolling ball cam that they were able to achieve with pipe with a wheel on it. Mm. And we mounted a critter ball on it that would spin, which was really quite cool, I thought. Ethan's able to grab a, uh, I don't know, cooling spaceship stick, allowing the critter to vape Ooh. for a bit, delivering toxic metals like nickel and lead into its lungs. Mm. That's metal in your lungs. The e-cig yeah. finally freezes George Cristanza, and his Baldi. death is more than confirmed when Ethan kicks it into a wall, oh. smashing it like a hot shot's Hussein. Unfortunately, Ugtra has woken <sighs> back up and is ready to snipe Ethan in cold blood. Charlie comes to the rescue, pointing the Colt 45 at this cold, almost 45-year-old. You can do it, Charlie. You never could. Okay, so this is the same Ugg and not a clone or whatever. I guess you must have forgotten that Charlie did pull the trigger on the biggest bounty kill in the franchise. And so he pulls the trigger again now, sad, shooting buddy. this solar baby in the head with the power to say goodnight. Things change. So do people. Fran declares this space station has fallen and they blast off in the Terracore ship, all while Angela's sweet, nutty nuclear core explodes with something more than flavor. And this standard sci-fi yeah, ending explosion just... is going to add six yeah. more critters to the bounty board that we can oh, see in these confusing whip pans in the lab. There's one on his own, three over here, this one, and I think a reused bleachy in the background. <laughs> the movie ends with Charlie being told not to touch anything, even though he's actually flown this exact type of ship before. But still, he can't help himself when he sees a big red button. The kind that Don't should touch. never ever be pushed. It then launches us into more reused footage and a royalty-free version of Great Balls of Fire. How many people's <laughs> screams went unheard thanks to these spaced invaders? Let's find Trying out find and out? get to the numbers. With the help of this new computer AI that I installed in the Dead Meat set. Hey Angela, initiate to the numbers bit for Critters 4. Did you say burn down James and Chelsea's house? What? No, no, cancel, cancel. Ooh. Crap. 
Get fired. This is why I don't let you do more kill counts. I know. <laughs> Hope my wife and pets are okay. Mm. <laughs> That's all good. Well, three people and four aliens died in Critters 4. Four men, that is if you count Ugg as identifying as male, and three unknown, giving us another frozen critter of a pie chart. Oof. With a runtime of 105 minutes, that gives us a kill on average every 15 minutes. <laughs> as for the bounty board, we can add eight critters. One for Ethan, one for Charlie, and six for Angela. That gives us a critter kill on average every 13.1 minutes, which seems way too high for this movie. Look at the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Captain Rick Buttram. The effects were a little limited, but hey, we've never seen a baby critter choke a bitch like Wayne Brady. Yeah, pretty much. The machete for lamest kill goes to the three snowboard troopers. Yeah, you know, you know, the how they died. Dumb, their aim was dumb, their off-screen deaths were dumb. Just everything about this was painfully dumb. I mean, seriously, yeah, uh, there's tin foil the... on their helmets. And the Bounty Booty Award for best critter kill goes to Baldy. Sure, it may be derivative of Terminator 2, which, you know, came out that same year, but still but it's a unique kill it. that isn't just shooting or blowing them up off screen. And that's it. Critters 4 came out in 1992 and has some incredible actors working with a script and budget that were less so. Par. The next Critters film wouldn't come out for 27 years and would ditch basically all connections to the previous entries. I'll look at that one next week to finish off our Critathlon. Oh, but until one? then, I'm a man whose kill counts have okay. more cameos than a Muppet movie. <laughs> this, this has been, has been one of those kill counts. Yay, I'm not alone! Whew! Okay, so looks like it was off. We got one more and then we're done. But luckily for us, do have a Sunday day one coming up. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this one. It's honestly boring. Come on. What do you guys think? So, till next time, like, subscribe for more. See you for the next one. Laters.